Hey class, my name is Juan Anthony Fernando, and today we're going to be discussing single cycle processors. All right, so we're going to do that by mainly answering three questions. Firstly, what are they? Obviously, we're going to answer that. Secondly, we're going to go over what are their main components. And third, we're going to see how do, how do they work. And probably we're going to spend a lot of time mainly on number three. So first, let's begin with what are they? What is a single cycle processor? Well, to do answer that, let's scroll down to here. So what are they? Well, really, a single cycle processor, this is a single cycle processor right here. Yeah, it's huge, it's complicating, but we're gonna go over it and it's gonna make somewhat some sense. So a single cycle processor is basically a processor that can execute one instruction per cycle, right? So for every clock cycle, it executes one 32-bit instruction, or in our case for the ARM processor, a 32-bit instruction. Some of their pros are that they're very simple and a lot easier to understand, and that since it's one instruction per clock cycle, you always know exactly how many cycles it takes to um, execute a certain number of instructions. And with that, it makes it a lot easier to do pipelining. And then secondly, uh, or and then the one of the cons is that um, you have a limited speed you're speed limited to the um, slowest instruction, right? So if you think about the clock and you have to, the clock um, speed is measured in like cycles per second in hertz, right? And it's a certain, um, it's a constant speed, right? And in order for that period, that time period to remain the same, it has to be able to account for the slowest instruction that's, um, that you have because the instructions are not all the same exact, all, not all gonna take the same exact amount of time. So therefore you're limited to the slowest instruction. Okay, second question to answer. What are their main components? All right, so in order to start understand that huge um, diagram, we have to understand the main components of the um, single cycle processor first. So we're gonna do that down here, right? And we're gonna look at the key components of a, of a ARM process, uh, of a single cycle processor. Those four key components are the program counter, this guy right here, the instruction memory, the register file and the data memory. So the program counter, what that basically is, is that's going to keep count of where in the instruction memory, where in the program memory we are, and that'll tell us what instruction we're going to want to execute. And then the instruction memory, that's where all of the um, program instructions are held, right? Each 32-bit instruction is held here. And then here in the register file, that's where all the registers are. And then here in data memory, that's where that memory that we're accessing, you know, when we do, for instance, a, um, a load register uh, command, right? We're loading a register, for instance, say R1, with some data at some specific, uh, at some specific memory address, usually calculated with a base address, let's say um, a base address stored in R2, um, and then uh, also adding an offset of say uh, eight, right? So those are the main components of an R of a single cycle processor. And now let's go ahead and see how does it work. So this is the full single cycle processor. And if you can see, it's not so scary if you look at the parts that we remember, right? The program counter right there, the instruction memory, register file, and data memory. And then we have this control unit here, which is gonna send control signals to different parts of the single cycle processor. Um, and everything else here are just peripherals that allow these four things to uh, communicate with one another and to uh, execute instructions, right? And there's just a lot of things like some adders here, which are gonna add to inputs and uh, an output. Um, we have some multiplexers, which are gonna choose from giving two inputs, what it wants to pass on to output. We have an ALU, which is arithmetic logic unit, and that can perform functions as adding, subtracting, a lot of different things. And then we have this guy extend here, which is basically gonna prepend a lot of zeros to a number to make it a certain uh, number of bits. So to understand this, let's look at an example of an instruction and see how it goes through the single cycle processor. We're gonna look at this instruction load register nine with this spot in memory, right? So this is the instruction we're gonna take a look at. 
And I've already gone ahead and converted it into uh, machine code. Well, actually, this was an example from the book. So it's actually already converted for me, right? So we're going to look at how does this instruction get executed in, uh, in the single cycle processor and the data path that it takes. Firstly, let's see what is load R, what is this saying? What is this, what does this mean? Well, basically what this is saying is we have, um, we have a um, destination register, which is R9, right? So this is our destination, destination. And we want to load a um, we want to load some data from a specific spot in memory. We want to load data that's from this spot in memory right here. And that spot in memory is calculated using a base address, base address, which is held in R4, and an offset, which is right here, which is this number, which is a, a multiple of four, in this case, 16. And that's how we calculate the base address. And that um, that spot in memory, they're going to take that um, whatever data is held at that spot in memory and load it into our destination register. All right. So if we look here, this is a translation of this hex code into um, binary down here. And then the binary is then split into um, specific fields that are named here in green, right? Over pick green, right here, right? Those are the names of the fields. And we see each field has, um, uh, uh, contains a certain number of bits. And um, also the values of each of those fields are written down here. And those will become important later. All right, so let's see how this works. So the first thing that we need to do when we're, um, we're loading this in, when this is being executed, the program counter, which is gonna be holding whatever um, the address of our instruction, is going to go into instruction memory and fetch this instruction. And that's going to go through out through read data. Then that instruction is going to get split. And um, bits, different bits from that um, instruction memory are going to go to different places. Right? You can see these, um, these bit numbers here. Uh, for instance, and up here in the control unit, it's going to take um, the bits from the field's con condition, op, function, and rd. And we can see those down here, right? We can see condition, you know, op, function, and rd, right? Those are all going to go up into the control unit, and they're going to be used to calculate what our um, control signals are going to be, all right? And then nextly, uh, next thing is that um, the instruction is going to come out here, um, and so it comes out here, and then splits up, right? And the first thing that we need to look at is the base address, you know. Um, the base address is held in a specific register. Remember, it's held in R4, right? It's held in R4, which, um, and the, the register that the base address is in is held in, in field RN in the instruction, 19 through 16, bits 19 through 16. So that's going to come out here, and it's going to go into the register file, right? Uh, it's going to go into the register file to tell the register file where the base address is, which which register the base address is stored in. In this case, R four, and then the the offset, which is um, sixteen, that's going to go over here. Let's do a different color. We'll do red. That's going to go out here. The offset is held in uh, bits eleven through zero in the source two um, field down here. Right, and that's going to go into extend, where it's going to have a bunch of zeros prepended to it, and the number of zeros is controlled by this blue line by the IMMSRC, and that's going to control how many zeros we prepend based on what the instruction is. And then after those zeros are prepended, and after um, the register where the base address is accessed then it's going to read that base address out of the register through here, and it's going to go straight into this ALU as, this, um, as one of the inputs. Same thing with the uh, offset. That's going to go out here and into ALU as a, second, um, as a second input. And then what's going to happen is we need to calculate um, what, where, what spot in memory we're trying to access 
doing by doing base address plus the offset. And so once again, the control unit is going to tell the ALU by going here, right along here, right? The ALU um, SRC is going to, oh, sorry, wrong one. ALU control is going to tell the ALU that we're doing addition. And so it's going to add the base address and 16 together, and that's going to come out right here in the ALU result. That's now the address that we're of the memory that we're trying to access, which is going to go now into data memory, and it's going to access that data that we want to read, uh, that we want to load into register nine, and that's going to come out through here, through read data, and then finally go all the way down here, zoop, all the way back here, and go right into register file. Now remember, we need to know what register we're reading into. That would be our destination right here, right? Our destination is register nine. And that information is held here in field RD. So that information is gonna go out here into the register file to tell the register that the target, uh, tell the register file the destination register where we wanna put that data. And with that, the clock cycle is completed. Simultaneously, while all of this is happening also, we're actually going to be, um, the PC is going to increment, right? So it's gonna increase by four by going down here into this adder. It's gonna add four, and then that will be the address of the next instruction. And then on the next clock cycle, that's gonna come into here, and it's gonna be loaded into PC as the next instruction. So with that, that's how a single cycle processor works and thank you for watching.